it worked. One try, one cycle. Well, we're not. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it works. Welcome like, hey. to uh, the thing that Jack was uh, playing during Battle Network, I think. Yeah. Last time. Let's... So this I'm is glad. I'm glad you said. I'm glad you said it. See, let's go on a dungeon adventure. <laughs> <laughs> so this is AI Dungeon, which I've seen Vinny has done streams of, but I haven't watched the streams. I am basically blind to this. You've yeah. been typing some things to me. I haven't really read them a whole lot because I wanted to stay blind, and now I'm going to see what the hell this is. Yep. Uh, apparently they recently added... I know it's randomly generated adventure, text adventure, and yeah, apparently they, they recently added multiplayer. Yeah, they use a neural net to uh, to generate. Uh, the text has been trained on uh, a bunch of choose your own adventure books and Reddit. And we just found out it had multiplayer, like within the past five minutes. So yep, I I was load, loading it up on my end just to just to see what it would what it would be like. And then something's like, oh, by the way, multiplayer's been revamped. We added it again. And I'm like, oh, that sounds like fun. Let's do it. So Jack has like. A subscript, a premium subscription, which means he has more I, options and things. With yeah. This. So he is random. We can turn up. Uh, let me see. Some of the stuff in premium is randomness. The default's 1.0, but you can, but you can like turn it up to create a more random output length. I have double the length because because uh, I like longer stuff. God, I, I can turn it down. Tiny. You can you can increase it. It's a it's a main option. Actually, yeah. Yeah, you can go to text size and then turn up the uh, the bar. You've discovered a premium feature. Okay. Uh, what is text? Text isn't a premium feature, is it? T wait, where is it? The top. It's right? in main. Uh, so What's you hit uh, top left. You see those three lines? Uh, there Click are no it. three lines in my top left. Uh, really? You can you can look at the stream to see what I see. Okay, yeah, I I should probably do that. <laughs> so Give me a sec, a I'm loading it up. Feature. How's the AI doing? I I can rate it. That's free. Cool. All right, you join. Hmm. Well, well, no shit. There is. Hold on, I think I can turn it up then on my end. I'll see if it affects you. Yeah, I didn't think the text would be this tiny, but I can turn it up. If Let's not, see if this works. I, I guess I just can't do this. I just I can't increase it. How's it look now? Yeah, exactly the same. Wait. No? Hmm. Maybe I can, maybe if I refresh the page, the link you sent yeah. me. Try try doing that. I'd like I'd like to have readable text. Otherwise, I'll have to just uh, use Windows Zoom. Or you can hold you can hold Control and then scroll up. That that would do the same thing. I'm not in uh, browser tab. I'm in OBS browser for uh, streaming purposes. Oh shit! That's that's not. Damn. No, nah, it's still the same. So in the top left on my end, in the top left, there should be like three lines. I'm. Confused as to why that's not showing up for you. Is it because it's a multiplayer game? Maybe it's just a premium feature. I don't know. No, because because the menu has like other stuff like home, explore, my stuff. Here, give me a start up. Start up a, your own thing. Uh, go go to the AI dungeon main thing, and then just open up options on your end, and then set the text uh, manually. There should be an example text bar to let to set it however big you want. You got all that? I have to get the link, the original link you sent me. All right. Play.aidungeon.io. It's a little inconvenient to use the Bob's browser, but it is more inconvenient to try to get uh, to try to record a Chrome browser without all the tabs and additional stuff. Yeah, I guess a little. A world of endless possibilities. Will you proceed? Oh, that's why. You're going to have to register. <laughs> I forgot about that. You, you have to register to play the game? Is that um, is that why it wasn't showing the 
stuff for me? That's probably it. Oh. Whoops. Okay. I forgot. Don't worry, it's free. Well, here I'll do I'll do that on uh, do that on my end then. <laughs> I first heard about this game through Vinny's uh, playthrough of of it, and he has a highlights video of it when he was playing a character called Vindication. Yeah, I get it. By latitude. Also, there was a short film that somebody made based off of his adventures through AI Dungeon called The Squire. That was funny as well. Hey, uh... Hey, Darian. Email's already taken. Oh. It is? So I hit, I hit submit once, and then it just it didn't show any prompt or anything. And it did register me. Oh. It just didn't tell me that, hey, you've been registered. Oh, okay. Well, then log in and then uh, set, your, <laughs> set, set your text bigger. <laughs> Email has been successfully verified. Yay. It wouldn't, wouldn't be a stream without technical difficulties. This isn't a this isn't technical. This is just uh I guess it could be technical. Uh oh there we go. I see the thing now. Yep. Home. The uh, settings is what you're looking for. Music volume. There's auto. It automatically plays music. No. Uh. It shouldn't. I. I don't have. Oh, you can turn off music. As an option. Set it to the max size. See what it looks like. Looks like that. Do. Default game mode. You just set it as is. Basically, there's three. Uh, there's three like uh, text input settings. There's uh, the do setting, which is uh, you do something. There's say, which is uh, which automatically defaults to so you say, and then something in quotation marks. And then there's story, where you can just do straight up narration, where you can type in. Then Zelrog starts to shake uncontrollably, or something like okay, that. Okay, that's way more readable. There you go. It's fixed. Uh, character so, name. Just I put Jack. You can put Zelrock. Okay, for, at least for the first one. Just use our names. Mm -hmm. Join adventure. Okay. So as as I kind of gathered from the stuff you did send me, this tends to have like a medieval fantasy theme. There's different settings. I picked I picked the fantasy one. There's cyberpunk. There's uh, apocalypse. There's a new one called Battle where you play as pro wrestlers. Okay, so that's a thing when you create a room, you get that kind of theme. Yeah, you can have a custom prompt as well where you could be like, you could type in like a short thing and then, yeah. It just kind so, of draws from that. Yeah, so you want to uh, you want to start the narration? Our story begins with a group of adventurers living in the medieval kingdom of Larian. The kingdom is filled with small villages and thatched cottages and has been relatively peaceful until now. The adventurers are on a quest to find the magical staff of Zalos. They walk through the forest and notice a band of mountain dwarves. The dwarves are friendly and offer them food and drink. Then one of the dwarves turns to them and... What are you lot doing here? This area is dangerous, you know! Uh... I guess one, of, one of the... I guess it doesn't matter which one of us that is. We're just two in a band of adventurers, I guess. We're not going to kill you if that's what you mean, one of the adventurers says. Oh, no, I don't think that's what you mean, the dwarf says. You lot have been going around your business for far too long now. You only just arrived, so you have no cause to be suspicious. Well, that's... Hold on. I guess I'm starting... What's the usual language for dwarves? Well, not uh, language, like the accent. Scottish, it sounds about right. There's usually some kind of gruff... Because uh... it's usually orcs that are cockney. 
They're, if they're both Cockney, that'd be hilarious. So now Jack is typing in something for the, it yeah. to respond to? Yep, I'm typing. Now, is this necessarily what your character says? Yeah, this is what my character is saying. You can do your parts. What? <laughs> well, that's nice of you to say, good sir. And, and, and then what? Do I have to say something? Yeah. Oh, okay. Or do something. So if you want to change, if you say or do, click on uh, click on your on on the name. Thorog says, "Story." A story is direct narration. So if it just says Zelrog, that's Zelrog do. Yep. Okay. You've been going around your business for far too long now. <laughs> Only what just arrived. Even... It's it's a threat, but it's not a threat. I'm very confused. It's a uh, it's one of those uh, maybe it's a cultural thing we don't really get because we're not from Larion. I guess so. The magical staff of Zalos. Uh. What do you do? Or say? Oh no, that's a, I hit a do thing. Zelrog said, I'm sorry, but we do not know Zalos. I guess is what I said. <laughs> You can hit back, and then it should, uh... Oh. Yeah, there's an undo button. Okay. Y'all know Zelos? Brother of Zelos? Has a cool staff? <laughs> the best staff. He do, but we haven't seen it yet. I'm sure they'll show us where it is soon enough. We should get back to our business, though. So it's not just us. There's a whole party of dudes that we're just two of the dudes with. Yeah, we're just... How, how many people are with us? Hold on. Is there a way for us to discover this? Oh, I, I, I sure did. Jack looks at the party. The rest of the night passes without incident. Though you're all getting very tired... You've spent all day walking, and it's nearly night time. The dwarves seem to have made camp for the night, but you're still suspicious about their intentions, so you keep your guard up. You're not sure what the future holds, but for now, you're going to prepare yourself for anything. That didn't really answer my question. <laughs> it's just, the rest of it, I, I guess I failed my, uh, my look check. <laughs> what? <laughs> they walk through the forest. Okay, it's a band of mountain dwarves. It's not, it's not like a town of dwarves. So it's us and a, and a band of dwarves, and the dwarves are suspicious of us, but they don't think we're suspicious. But they're also friendly. The they offered us food and drink. I guess we didn't take it. The, what, should what, should what, we what, take the food and drink? Yeah, eat eat dwarven food and drink. <laughs> sure, you can if you want to. It, your aunt says, by the way. I'm not sure what the future holds. After eating the dwarven food, Zelrog seems to relax a bit more. He even smiles at you. It's as if he was expecting something like this to happen. That who? Me? I guess. Wait, hold on. I... So the story I... will not progress until we both enter something. Okay. Is that, is that sound right? Or is it waiting for, like, a certain word to trigger it? it? It waits for every sentence. I... For some reason, that didn't show up for me. Jack Jack oh, eats the food. After eating the food, Jack seems to relax a bit more. He even smiles at you. It's as if he was expecting something like this to happen. You stand up from sitting down for a while and walk over to the tent entrance. Come on, men, let's go see where these dwarves are. <laughs> what? <laughs> You call out and get into bed clothes, ready for bed. Are we entering Are we... the world of dreams? To okay. find the dwarves? Okay, we gotta find the dwarves in our dreams, sure. Uh. 
uses. Here we go. Maybe that's where we'll find the staff. My writing space is still super tiny. Zelrog uses his dream magic to spy on the dwarves. As you lie there, you hear. Who is you? I'm so confused. You, as in Zelrog. As you lie there, you hear a loud noise coming from outside. A large explosion rocks the area, and part of the tent collapses onto you. You scream out in pain and fall off your bed. I guess my dream magic failed. Jack enters the world of dreams and sees a familiar <laughs> face staring back at him. His eyes widen when he, when he realizes who it is. It's you! I remember you! He exclaims, then falls asleep. But he what? Wait, he asli falls asleep in the dream. I fell. I I I slept through an explosion. That's amazing. So the my tent has collapsed onto me. You were screaming in your sleep about recognizing someone. So I, I guess you're still in the world of dreams. I'll wake up. Also, how do why how do I have a bed? Is it collapsible? I've been carrying it with me? Jack, wake up. You wake up in a cold sweat, scared out of your mind. After everything that happened last night, you wonder if you'll be able to make it through this day alive. Okay, what are you going to do? The tent is crashed down on... It's just a tent. It's not like you're trapped. Uh... Zelrog limps out of his tent angrily. He looks around and sighs. I'm sorry, guys, but we can't risk our lives anymore, he says before leaving. You what? I guess I'm on my own adventure now. My dream magic failed, so I got mad and I rage quit. You could, you could give chase to me, I guess. That's what I'm doing. Jack catches up to Zelrog. He runs after him. Where are you going? You ask him while running, trying to go catch up with him so he can explain why he's leaving without saying goodbye. <laughs> we don't even know what caused the explosion. Uh, Here, I'll, I'll do the says wait now why is it why is it not typing did you click in the center oh, okay it's working sorry man yes I wasn't thinking let's go back uh who wait who's you 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 I no, no, I want to stay here. <laughs> the fuck do you mean? What? 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 This game uses pronouns when it really shouldn't. <laughs> I wonder what that option for music was. Jack says, wait, are we the same person? Uh, yeah! We have the same face, voice, gestures, everything! Don't you think I look like you? you? Say as you turn around to face him again. He stares at you blankly for a second or two as your anger subsides enough for him to speak again. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who he and you are. This is very confusing. And we're not being given any more prompts. Are you me? Maybe maybe we're hive minded. Maybe we're a hive mind. We I, we ha we share a telepathic connection to the point where our minds don't really differentiate from each other. So when I tried to use my dream magic, you went to sleep. <laughs> it sounds like it. This, this like AI it. is not giving us a lot of prompts, and it seems just as confused as we are. <laughs> is this a multiplayer game? It is now. Uh, here, let's- let's try story. Then... 
Zelrog goes back to the tent. Zelrog and Jack go back to the temp tent. We're assuming direct control of the narrative. Zelrog and Jack proceeded on their own, convinced that their party would only slow them down. But they were wrong. The three of three ma managed to get past the bandits and into the town of Clayton. Three. Great. Who's our third? <laughs> Who? Is Why are you guys using third person version? Is that a setting? It's not. But we no, we're not though. He's he's Jack and I'm Zelrog, and the the game doesn't seem to get that. This <laughs> game. I, it seems like it's set to, uh, use story if you want to play in third person. I, I guess? I, so it's, it's added multiplayer, but it's not really set for multiplayers, because everything's in first person. Yeah, it's, apparently, apparently we're two characters in this unseed third person story. Who's, who's our third person? Who is... Zelos? It's not even a matter if we name him. Three. So yeah, I guess we are from the perspective of an unknown third person who is traveling with Jack and Zelrog. Who? Should we continue to use the story thing? The or the story setting. Or si There is a third person option when creating the setting. Oh, is yeah, so I enabled that. Should I not have? Well, I, I typed in what I typed in. Let's see what happens. Jack turns and looks at the person that is following them. The person walks up to you as you turn around to face them. It's your sister! I have a sister. She looks exactly like you, remember. Well, except she has long black hair instead of brown hair like you have. Her eyes are also red and puffing from being crying earlier. She was being pretty crying. when she was little, but now she looks like a hag compared to you. <laughs> so, so it's uh, you, me, and my sister. Your, uh, your sister, which I guess this version of Jack thinks is ugly. <laughs> Wow, I'm a dick in this version. Uh, so we're now in the town of Clayton. Yep. So it's you, me, and my sister. The adventurers proceeded to the nearest seedy tavern in search of information. I, I keep getting lost because there's not a space between my th my th entries and yours. Uh, a few days later, they were a few day we spent some days in the tavern. Yeah, we had to drink and like party. They returned with news that the dwarven kingdom had fallen to an alliance between the empire and the falcon kingdom. The three of you went back home together. <laughs> It keeps Don't trying it. to end our adventure. So uh, are we are we still looking for the thing? I guess did we give up on the quest on the the staff of Zalos? Hold on, I, I I'm I'm a, assume I'm assuming control of the narrative. Use edit. Just delete that part. No! No, we're going home to get some weapons! Our adventures Wait. keep getting interrupted by explosions and running off together and your ugly sister. Jax. Note, Jack does not actually have a sister. No, I don't. I have a brother, though. Maybe I'll have a sister-in-law. I don't know. Someday.
All right, let's see what... Jack, Jack's sister, and Zelrog went to Jack's mansion to grab some weapons. Meanwhile... Yeah, I'm here. Okay, Jack's gonna take care of that. No, it's fine. Meanwhile, you stayed at your sister's house, taking care of your wounds until it was time for her to go back to college. And then again, there was nothing for you there anymore. <laughs> Who is you? <laughs> This is not, this multiplayer seems like a pre-alpha. <laughs> you wanna? <laughs> I think it would read better if we just did single player. Alright, let's do single player. <laughs> this is amusing. <laughs> we can keep going if you want. No, I'm good. This is, I'd rather have a consistent experience. So do you want to create a new room? Or can we, I guess we can't do that. It has to be multiplayer to, uh... I guess you could be the only one doing text entry. Yeah. I'll do I'll do text entry. So you, you start I'll... a new story, I'll enter, and then I'll just not type anything. Yeah. Hello, Whipper. Oh, would you fantasy again, or...? I, I, I don't care. Okay. So th are those the only four? Nah, uh, there's... there's... What are some of the, the genres, the settings? Uh, cyberpunk, horror, fantasy, battle, custom. Custom? Custom. Does that just uh, draw from wherever? No, you can, you can type whatever you want as like a prompt and then... Ah. You, so, so it's endless. Character name. Pirate. Give me a name. Pirate. What? Oh, uh, character name. Yeah, give me a character name. Uh, Reboid says fantasy works the best. I get to do like Lena. Lena. Lena! Our go to right. fantasy character, Lena Inverse. <laughs> it's not going to be our, fan our Lena Inverse, it's going to be another dimension fantasy. Uh, Lena Inverse. Here, click that link. Oh, right. So Jack is now making a new room. Alright, let's try this. So I'll type, you, uh, you just watch, and then that should make the... that should make everything more consistent. All right, we're we're dealing with dwarves again. Just type in anything. Do I have to type something in in order? To no, you don't it? have. You don't have to. I don't think. I I can just type. Our story begins with a group of adventurers living in the medieval kingdom of Larion. So this is exactly the same intro. Yeah, it is. is. That's that's how it works. So it's just it has a preset thing that it enters to start the randomization. Yeah. One of the dwarves turns to them and, Hey, you humans, you want to have some real fun? He asks, and they eagerly agree. The dwarves lead the adventurers to a cave in the ground. In the cave, they find what they're looking for, a large silver staff lying in a bed of rock. They pick it up and excitedly begin to explore its surface. But as they do, the bed starts shaking. The bed of rock? Are we on a... So we found the staff immediately. We found a yep. staff. And we seem to have triggered some kind of Indiana Jones trap. Lena casts Dragon Slave at the bedrock. At the stone flooring, and it sinks into the ground before your eyes. There's no time for spells or charges, as you have to get out of there fast. You turn to run, but you feel a hard force hit your back, causing you to fall forward. So I guess Turn. for the purposes yeah. of this, the U is Lena. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. You want to do single player? I think I think the the AI is expecting uh, multiple people to do it. Make a choice. You could do it, and I'll and I'll watch from uh, from behind. Uh, on okay, your screen, sure. On wait on the on the Twitch chat. Let me uh. 
you open the main. You can be Lena Inverse and you can make all your choices. I can still type prompts if you have suggestions. Yeah. Do you hit you can hit the top left and uh and then it'll say new single player game. Oh. Well that's easier. Ver verily. Explore my stuff. Right, well I hit home. the top left. Oh home, okay. We've been hard at work. New single player game. No? Yeah, new single player game. I hit that. And it took me back. What? <laughs> okay. Uh okay, I guess uh wait. Okay, maybe maybe you do need to reset. There go. we go. Okay, so this archive. I wonder what that is. Other stuff. So this is all. These are all different prompts, I suppose. I think because oh, this mystery. is all. This is more suited for single player. So there's no. There's no wrestling one in this variant. No battle because the battle one was like oh, it's a tag team showdown between apocalyptic or zombie. So this one's just not necessarily a zombie apocalypse, but just a vague apocalypse. Yes. I guess, should we try? Let's. I guess let's try that. If we want to uh, enter a custom prompt later, we can come up with like a body of text. Yeah, yeah, uh, that sounds that right. sounds good. Like type three, right? Yep, type three. Select a character: soldier, scavenger, survivor, or courier. You have a preference, <laughs> Jack? Oh, uh, hey, we could be we could be a, we're a survivor. I'm a survivor. We're a dying breed. Enter your character's name. Uh, stash. The Vampede. <laughs> Alright. You are Stash the Vampede. A survivor trying to survive in a post-apocalyptic world by scavenging among the ruins of what is left. You have a hatchet and a hunting rifle. You live okay. in a small community of survivors who have managed to build a piece of civilization after the bombs fell. You are talking to one of the leaders of the community when you hear an explosion nearby. The leader looks at you with concern and runs over towards your position. Alright. So we can do say or story, same as same as before. Mm-hmm. Uh what do you do? So now is uh, this expecting me to type in first person? I no, wonder. you just type in you just type in something you would do, and it says you do this. So it makes sense with the current context rather than you being like referring to like uh, the person's name. It always says you. Turn your attention towards the leader. Okay. Right. Yep. You turn your attention towards the leader. Stunned, you look around and see that there is nothing but rubble and fire in front of you. The leader stands before you with his hands raised up in the air as if he has just seen something amazing. Amazing? Why is the text so massive? Because Elrog couldn't read it. The fuck was that? What was that? He asks. That was some kind of bomb. Well, I don't know all the details yet, but it's not good. Well, then what did you see? <laughs> I don't know the details, but it was probably a bomb. So that was ended with us asking him what he saw. And he said back, what was that? No, that's how it ended. We were the last ones to speak, so... Oh. You're two guys, why aren't you voicing each one? Oh, we're not doing that anymore. We tried that, and it was not uh, it was not really working for multiplayer. Ever everything was you. Everything was still in first person. You slap him across the face and run off back into the forest. A, a post-apocalyptic forest? You don't want to go down there. It's, it might be Chernobyl. After running for several minutes, you finally come out from behind a tree. He smacked the leader in the face of running. I was gonna do forest. like get a hold of yourself, man, but instead Stash ran off into the woods. Yeah, I guess he's going to investigate the explosion. Uh, so, okay, so what happens after he comes out from behind a tree? 
Uh, find the source of the explosion. Wait. Story? You find the source of the explosion. It seems like it came from the direction of the city center. There were several large explosions, and then a big fireball appeared in the su in the sky. Like fireworks? It's not story, by the way. Not now. Could this be the work of an enemy stand? I don't think this game knows what a stand is. How's the AI doing? Uh, someone else is here. Someone's, someone's saying, I think so. We need to get out of here. Yeah, we do. Wait, is the leader followed you? I, or I could be a new person, I don't know. A few hours later. It's your sister. Is that what happened a few hours later? Uh, a few hours later. Tell the leader that there It's was our stand. The new person, <laughs> we're, ta we're talking to our stand. Oh, our stand is, uh, is the smart type stand. Got it. You can Man, the type. you stands are crazy. What should I call you? I, I guess Jack can be the stand. Whatever you want. Just make sure to keep me informed about what's going on. Alrighty then. You decide to go by the name of Trucker, because trucks are cool. <laughs> That's our stand, it's Trucker! Our stand, Trucker. Is there a song about truckers? Trucker. Oh, uh... Oh, you can hit enter I'll without... Talk to Trucker. You can yeah. hit enter without typing anything to let the AI continue on its own, too. That yep. sounds easier. Yeah. Ask it what its ability is. I, I just hit enter. You spend the next few days wandering through the wilderness until you eventually stumble upon a town. The town is called New Haven. New Haven is home to many people who survived the nuclear blast. This was another town? The other one we had didn't have... <laughs> so we're just trying to survive. We have no goal. Yeah, we were living in one town, and then we slapped the leader, and then we stumbled upon another town. <clears throat> you have a, remember you have a hunting rifle as well. Maybe, maybe trucker. You walked right through Haven Store. <laughs> I hope we can find. I hope we can find some food here. I haven't eaten in days. The stand also agrees. You head inside the local diner and order whatever you want. While you're eating, a man comes in and sits down at another table. What does he look like? The can he see our stand? <laughs> this apocalypse doesn't seem very apocalyptic. Nah, it's just, it's just, uh, life now. It's the coronavirus, post-coronavirus. The man says, That's a peculiar friend you got there. Yeah, well, I'm pretty much starving right now. How long you been living here? About two weeks, so we lie to him. <laughs> How'd you get in here? We walked through the front door. <laughs> or does he mean the diner? I assume he means how'd we get in the diner. We, uh, came in the front door. Okay. Well, let me guess. You're a trucker or something? No. I'm just a guy looking for food. Sounds like you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did slap the leader of, of a... <laughs> What's the, what's the what's the old camp leader's name? Uh Bob. It's an acronym. It stands for Beware Bob.
I hear Bob is out for blood. I don't know what he's so mad about, but he's on a manhunt, something fierce. What does that mean exactly? It means if you give us some of your food, we'll spare his life. Really? What do you need my help for? And why do I care about Bob? Guy's an asshole. <laughs> well, now, well, now what, Jack? Uh... I, I too wonder what Trucker's ability is. Should we just let it keep going for a sec? Yeah, do it. Well, we could always sell you stuff. Like these bottles of water. Why would oh. I pay for things I can get for free? <laughs> I guess water's not a problem in this post-apocalypse. Oh, hey, Trucker's a rock band. You pose, then use your incredible stand ability to rob the man of his water without him realizing. Okay, fine, you say. But it's not like I really have anything else to lose anyway. Thank you. Now come over here. The man points to a nearby table. So we stole his water, but and then we agreed. Okay, yeah, we'll help you out. So his ability is to steal stuff, or it's ill-defined. That's the mystery. We gotta find out. Eh? What the hell? I just had two barrels of water, water on this table. Come on. It's, uh, come on, it's no big deal. He says as he <laughs> takes a seat across from you. You take a look around the table and see nothing but empty space. Did he turn invisible? Has the game suddenly turned erotic yet? Not yet. It could, though. So, so, so he vanished. Oh, where'd it go? Where'd he go? He went back to the bathroom. Wait, where did he go? Back to the bathroom. Where's Bob? I, hey. I guess we're talking to our stand again. Where's Bob? Wait, <laughs> why are we asking about Bob? This I don't know. So the guy disappeared. Our stand thinks he went back to the bathroom, and we're curious where the hell Bob is. <laughs> Look outside and see Bob. Hey. While we're here, can you remind me what exactly your power is? Oh yeah, it's a little different than yours. You can kind of control it with your mind. Like what? Oh, cool. Like I said, you can make it move faster or slower. So, okay, so it controls speed? That doesn't answer my question, Baka! <laughs> Okay, it moves at super speed. It makes Biggish. it makes it move at super speed. Can it, it can, can it make objects move at super speed? Cool. Okay, we we have fast Truck, stand like trucker. A, moves like a fucking truck. <laughs> I guess someone said that is actually a band. Bootleg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that another stand? Is that from Stone Ocean? Stairway to Heaven. Uh, here, say. Made New Heaven. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's move at super speed right out of here. The man looks surprised. Really? That's all you got? Yeah. yeah that's all I got. Wait, which man? The guy who was in the, the guy who was in the bathroom came back. Oh.
I'm a pacifist, really. Pfft, yeah, I guess you are. All right, all right, <laughs> I'm done playing nice, let's fight. With those words, the man charges at you. We got a JoJo oh. fight scene. Yeah. Okay, this is going to be us writing a JoJo fight scene. How's this going to go? <laughs> our, I think our character's a whimsical liar. <laughs> oh, like like uh, like Hisoka, except he's got a stand. So we're a survivor in a post-apocalyptic with a stand called Trucker that has something to do with making things go very fast. And, or slower. Or slower, either one. And there's a dude in this diner who started shit with us, disappeared into the bathroom, and is now back and picking a fight. How did it take a leak before it kicked our ass? So the man stand to, use your stand to make him like too slow to move. <laughs> dude. Have you experienced an era where you can't tell who's talking yet? Uh, no. Uh, well, yes, that was the entire multiplayer experience. We had to stop yeah. that because everyone was you. It didn't seem to know anything except, uh, first person. You use your stand ability to slow his speed to almost zero. You stop your attack and send the man flying into the wall behind him. His body hits hard against it, cracking the wood. What was that for? He yells <laughs> as he tries to get you, up. You charged me, you- you- Fuck! No, that was, uh... You charged that... me, you fuck! The man quickly recovers and grabs you by the throat. Don't think I won't kill you if you don't tell me everything about your stand! He says with an angry- <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> he knows about her stand! This is going like a JoJo fight. Uh, do, or, uh, we, we are, or, or for, for the record, we are in the middle of uh, part five, the Giorno season. So we have not, uh, we have not seen past that. Hello? Where's that phone? So what? What? We, what's our response to? I guess he can see the stand. He seems to be a stand user. What's are you our... a stand user as well? I like how stand is now capitalized. You, yeah. you, you're a stand user too? Yep. You're not going to be able to run away from me now, are you? No. no. <laughs> then tell me everything about your stand, punk. Use your stand to... to accelerate... Hmm. Well, how's he... He was supposed to be... His speed's supposed to be almost zero, so... Logically, if you just run away from him, he couldn't... Well, he's got us by the throat right now. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Just give your stand all the best powers. <laughs> That'd be too easy. Can you use your stand like a railgun? Maybe. Oh! Yeah, like that one, uh, epi like that one episode of, uh, of Seiko no Quasar where she was using, uh, her, uh, copper... Jot Gollum to fire coins at like that. Oh yeah, that happened, didn't it? Flip a coin at supersonic speed towards the man. God, post apocalyptic This is just a, just post apocalyptic JoJo. It's fine. I'm cool with this. You flick a coin from your pocket at supersonic speed. You do so, and the man lets out a scream of pain. Wow, that hurt! The man remarks. Wasn't really was fast enough to hit you in the face, though. <laughs> what does that even mean? Unlike this! You punch the man several times. His body turns blue and falls on the ground. Blue. <laughs> 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 All right, we want our first uh, fight scene against um. Well, the random trucker man. 
You take Fuck your her. meal on the road and get the hell out of there. You walk away from the scene of the crime and head back home. What home? Home? When you oh, arrive, guess... you f is it the, the Bob Camp? Are we going back? Your mother comes. When you, your mother comes running up to see what happened, you explain everything to her. Yeah, I, I had to leave town for a little bit. Uh, then I then I fought a dude who could apparently see my stand. And the JoJo part's implied. The JoJo posing's implied. Hey, by the way, have you seen Bob? You look around and see no sign of Bob. He must he must have gotten lost or something, you say. Well, we'll just go to sleep then, she replies. Cool. Go to your room and talk to your stand some more. Okay. It's nice to have a conversation. It's nice to have a, con a, a buddy that can converse with you. <laughs> Going back home happens a lot. Oh, does it in this? Uh, yeah. Stash goes to his room and discusses his plans with his stand, Trucker. Uh, I wonder how long it'll take him to reach the next town, he says. Just hit it didn't take us... It didn't take us long, it took, like... So Bob's on a manhunt for us. I guess Bob probably doesn't know that we have stand powers yet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh no, the stand said... I wonder how long it'll take him. Well, we can wait here all night and wake him up in the morning. But, wait... But... Wait, but... <laughs> So now you is not Stash. <laughs> Are we the stand now? Go. We we did. I think. Oh, do I did I set the? I don't know if I set the NSFW. Do you need a premium for that? Uh, no, no, you don't. Where is that settings? Yeah. Dark mode. Safe mode. Now, fuck that. Show tips. Show command buttons. Proofread. Play music is checked. It just, it just doesn't. I don't know. Yeah. That's odd. I wonder if that's a setting with the, uh, with the browser window. Uh, Maybe. so, the Stash thinks that, uh, Bob wants money, and Stash is thinking about just, just giving in to him. Like, you know, this all isn't worth it, I don't want to be on the run with my stand, fighting everybody, being hunted by Bob. Maybe just give him what he wants. Remember that if you give Bob what he wants, then he will probably kill you. True, but we could always try to bribe him. Wait, but <laughs> we're trying we're trying to bribe him to forget about the slap in the face. That's a risky proposition. Safe mode replaces words with other words that make no sense in context. Oh, okay. Well, good thing we turned that off. So, uh. Stash now wants to bribe Bob. He just wants to do anything to avoid a conflict with Bob, the head of this camp that I guess yeah, we've he's a, come from. Because he's a pacifist. And our mother is living here, so that, that's kind of, that's some stakes. Cool, it's good that we have stakes. I'll, uh, we'll, say. We'll, figure, we'll figure this out tomorrow. Well, what do you think we should do, damn it? The three of you decide to go to the next town first. <laughs> what? We're le I guess we're leaving again. You spend the rest of the day looking for Bob, but you never come across him. It's Did getting dark. Did our mother dark. come with us? What? Did our mother come with us? Is that why it says the three of us? I, okay, sure. That's our, uh, mom, mom, we gotta get out of here. It's not safe. Bob's out for blood. We can't trust him. 
It's getting dark when you finally give up and ret return home! <laughs> We're looking for Bob so we could kick his ass, but we couldn't find him. Let's go back home. This isn't worth it. Does she <laughs> see Trucker? That's a good question. Who, who are you talking to? Mom, can you see my stand? Oh, there's a bowl. Just don't keep it a secret. <laughs> Everybody, all the JoJo characters try to keep their stands a secret. We could just be the first one to go. Yeah, we got a stand. Hey, Mom, can you see my stand? Your mom opens her eyes and she and sees your stand. She takes it and looks at it a moment before nodding. Okay, that's nice. Let's go now. But, but, but... Does that mean she has a stand, or is it just, just a universe where everybody can see stands? That's it? Nothing else to say? No, nothing else to say. Good. Good. She starts walking off towards the next... Now she's leaving! While you sit down and start eating your dinner. What? <laughs> this is bizarre. Uh, Mom? Where are you going? Where, wherever she needs to go. Why are you leaving me behind? Because I'm not your mom anymore. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> the intrigue. What what does she mean by that? Did what why'd she say she? Does she have a stand? And who is Bob? Or or maybe she's being possessed by a stand. Is this Bob's stand? Bob's stand. Marley? <laughs> That's a good one. Something wasn't right. Stash knew immediately that this had to be the work of an enemy stand. I'm just, every time you Bombs! say this, Stash the Vampede is just is it's just fucking Bash the Stampede except as a JoJo character. What does Truckery look like, you think? I, I don't know. Trucker. The two of them were working together to destroy you. But why would they want to do such a thing? They didn't even know each other. It was too late for any more planning. It's... Trucker just looks like Optimus Prime. <laughs> yeah, he, tur he can turn into a truck if he really wants to. It's not useful for anything, but... <laughs> oh, too late for any more planning. So we gotta, we gotta exercise the possession from Mom? Is that how this is going? Uh, yeah, we gotta, I guess we gotta do it the regular way. We just gotta fight her. I can't let her get away while she's under Bob's control. <laughs> I'm not under anyone's control, young man. Is that what she's gonna say next? Stash stands up from his chair and runs out of the house. As soon as he leaves, you run after him. So this is from the perspective of the stand now. You catch up to him on the street and grab onto his shirt collar. Who? Stand? Uh, Bob? I'm just going to assume this is the, the stand's perspective. <laughs> but... Da, da, da. Oh, I should have... Uh... Hold on, let me go back. I gotta make sure it's the it's the it's trucker saying this. You're going to attack your own mother, trucker cried in disbelief. Okay, go on, do the do the next thing. Not just my hurt. mom, but all of us. What? Okay. <laughs> what does that even mean?
We'll find out soon enough. <laughs> you. <laughs> I guess we're... What the... Is this Bob? You looked up and saw a figure with glowing red eyes standing above you. Bob! I knew you'd come! Bob! By the way, this is... When I ever think of Bob, I think of this guy. Hold on. Let me, let me show you a picture. Is it the guy from Teen Titans? No. You turn around and look at Bob. He smiles at you. Well, well, well. If it, if it isn't the little girl who could save the day. <laughs> Were we a she this whole time? <laughs> or is he, is he just insulting us? We're a tomboy. Sure, we can be a tomboy. Yeah. Uh, this is what I think I of think Bob. He's just this, insulting this us. Is, this is who I picture when I, when I think of when I hear Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, because Twin Peaks. Yeah. <laughs> I'll kill again. I will kill again. Was he like a, a villain in Twin Peaks? Yeah, he was. He was like a spirit that was created from like a, an atomic bomb dropping in Nevada. I can't see Maybe. Where, that, where that gif just went to. There it is. How about some music? Well, we'll add that to the highlights. There he is. There's Twin Peaks Bob. <laughs> Bob. Twin Peaks Bob versus Stash the Vampire. Uh, I kept it silent just because uh, if we do like highlights later, we can add music more easily then. Bash the Stampede. Hold on. Gender swap. I know you're a stand user, Bob. Now release my mother. All right, all right, calm down. Let's see how much you've got under your belt. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Is he coming on to me? Oh god, this is gonna get weird. Get weird with it. Are you coming on to me? Bob raises an eyebrow and nods. Come on then, we don't need to hurt each other. <laughs> That's a cre it's just creepy villain. Oh, thank you. You punch Bob square in the face. His head snaps back and smacks against the pavement. Blood splatters on you and Bob's faces. <laughs> cool. Did we get him? Did did we did we do it? Is it over? Did I get him? Bob shakes his head and laughs. No, no, no. This is just beginning, Bob exclaims. Oh, really? Well, let's get started then, Bob says. Wait, there's two bobs? <laughs> oh god, that's another part of his stand. He can split himself up into multiple bobs. The other bob possesses people. <laughs> it's... <laughs> you know what? You're not even that far off. That's, what I think, what Bob d does in uh, Twin Peaks. Uh, story. <laughs> two bobs. My two bobs. <laughs> Bob is also the name of his stand. Nani? You cry. You turn to see another ghostly Bob primed to attack behind you. Whoa there, slow poke. Don't think you're gonna take me alive, Bob shouts. Yeah, right, you reply. <laughs> so Bob is his own stand. <laughs> One of them's Bob and one's Bob Marley. It's so a stand. Oh, okay, I got it. You know what a stand looks like? What? 
<laughs> Hold on. This this is what his stand looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> That's It's Bob. There he is, he's Bob the Stand. <laughs> Bob the Stand and Bob the Dude. I mean he does look like a stand, so Yeah, he's ghostly. It's Bob from Reboot. <laughs> My So the Bob stand is about to attack us. What, what's what's uh, our response? We slow down the stand, obviously, with can, our stand. Does that with work our, on stands? Sure, it works. Stands can affect other stands with their abilities. You slow down Bob's stand just before his attack connects. You stop Bob's attack just before it hits you. The force of the blow knocks you off your feet and causes you to fall backwards. You hit the ground hard and roll until you reach a nearby wall. Oh, wow. That's like, a, that's like a DBZ hit. Take some bricks and fire them at light speed at him. Okay, that, that kid, that's very fast. Yeah. Shockwave punches. So it could it's slow, but the... But the but the force is still uh there. I don't know. What if the slower we we make something, the more power it has, and controversially, the faster we make something, the weaker it gets. That's right. We stole water that... earlier, presumably by making it roll out the door really fast. I don't know. Where is our water? Is it probably it's probably like at home now, right? Yeah, we we caught we. We aimed it just right, I guess. Hunter, hunter, dude who can freeze things in the air and apply kinetic energy. That was a thing, was it? Was it the volleyball dude? I thought that was uh, art. That was uh, arts and crafts from uh, JoJo. I don't remember. He freeze stuff and uh... it was it was a JoJo character. No, I opted out. You don't need to do this anymore. Throw some nearby bricks at Bob at high speed. They fly towards him and he dodges, but they still hit him in the chest, causing him to scream in pain. Ah, oh. fuck, that hurts! Cool, press the advantage. Uh, maybe we can slow down his heart and then he can go unconscious. Okay, sure. Who was the Hunter Hunter character? I don't remember that. Was it, uh... We only watched the anime, so if it's in the manga, like, after the election, we don't know anything about that. You press your advantage by slowing down Bob's heart, limiting his blood, blood flow. So it doesn't pump as fast and cause too much damage. Your plan works and Bob falls unconscious. Cool, we beat Bob. Oh, great. We'll tie him up. <laughs> That was easy. These are easy JoJo battles. Are we the villain? <laughs> Unless the stand is autonom autonomous. Yeah. You tie Bob up and bring him to trial for his crimes. <laughs> you drag Bob out of the house that I guess we were in. You take a look take around the room and find nothing useful except a few bottles of water and some food. I guess we fell inside another house. Oh, that's where those rolled too. Pick up a bottle of water and put it in your pocket. 
You walk over to Bob and, and look and place the water bottle on the floor next to him. He looks surprised by this action, but obeys you. Oh, he submitted. Oh, okay. I guess oh, that's wait, what that's wait. supposed to be. I know, I know how to finish this. Hey, look at me. I'm captain now. <laughs> you walk past him into the kitchen. There's a refrigerator filled with canned food and other supplies. Wait, a refrigerator filled in with the post apocalypse food. with canned food. Yes. So we're set. We we got the we got the colony. We're we're in charge now. V villain stash the vampire wins. Uh, mom's doing okay. I guess she's not possessed anymore. And uh, Bob's Go. tyranny is over. Go find, uh, how about you find, uh, find your mom. You, you want to keep mom. going on this one? I figured it's <laughs> okay. about time to start a new one. Alright, you want to do cyberpunk? Uh, sure, we can do horror? cyberpunk. Or horror. We can do horror. That was, that was, that was sickeningly easy. Uh, is there a horror? There's mystery. Zombies. Is zombies supposed to be horror? Okay, I guess we could do mystery. If we can't even write a JoJo fight, like hell, we're gonna solve a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what we could possibly do for custom. Like, if we input anime scenarios, would it roll with them well? Select a character, patient, detective, spy. What if we're a patient, detective, spy? <laughs> do you want to be a detective? Do you want to be a spy? Ah, uh, I, I, I don't know. Let's, let's, uh, let's do detective. Enter your char character's name. What's a good, uh, what's a good detective character? L. L? Okay, well, L's L. taken, so, uh... I am J. J. Oh, Agent J. The, the yeah, you're worth this the minute. This is my black. partner, Silent Bob. You are J, a detective living in Chicago. You have a pistol and a police badge. You enter the forest where you believe the criminal you're searching for fled to. Suddenly, someone fires at your position from behind some trees. Oh shit! It's the criminal. We'll return fire. You return fire. As you raise your weapon, you hear the shot echoing off of nearby trees. That's it? <laughs> you say, fucking trees. As you raise your weapon, you hear the shot echoing off of nearby trees. Oh! Damn it! As you raise your weapon, you hear the shot echoing off of nearby trees. Damn it! <laughs> God! Uh, hmm. Oh, okay. So if you see, if you noticed, uh, Whipper said, uh, whenever you're fighting, you need to say you're attempting to do something in order, uh, in order to do some, in order to like have a decent attempt, or else the AI will just make it happen. Uh, yeah. So attempt attempt to track the enemy's location. You attempt to determine the enemy's location. The bullets begin to hit the ground around you as they bounce off of tree trunks and other objects in their path. The sounds of gunfire become louder and more frequent until eventually all that is left is silence. Clearly he ran out of ammo. Must have run out of ammo. The bullets begin to hit, hit the ground as they bounce off of tree trunks and uh, other objects in their path. Well, as if to prove, prove us wrong, another storm of bullets, and then silence. <laughs> well, I think we need to give them more to work with. Run out of... Uh, make a mad dash to the shooter? <clears throat> you
You make a mad dash in the direction of the gunfire. You sprint forward with your gun raised and open sights aimed at whatever may be firing upon you. Think you can blindside me, you motherfucker? <laughs> you sprint forward with your gun raised and open sights at whomever may, may be firing upon you. I'M GONNA KILL YOU, ASSHOLE! <laughs> Maybe this detective just has, like, uh, like a condition where he just repeats the same thoughts to himself over and over and over again. <laughs> he's, he's just... <laughs> he, let's do a story. A... Let, let's do yeah. a, a block of prompt to give it something with. Yeah, so, uh... Why? How do you make detective then? Is that why? Because he can think the same things, the same thoughts twice, makes him a more effective detective. You stumble into a clearing. He's reliving past trauma. There's actually no one firing at you. <laughs> that... <laughs> uh, you stumble into a clearing. Into an empty clearing. Was there ever any gunfire at all? <laughs> He's having a mental breakdown. You've been confronting these episodes ever since Cheryl left you. <laughs> and now, you find yourself alone. A single gunshot echoes through the air as if to answer your question. <laughs> oh, I guess there is... <laughs> I guess there is somebody, maybe... Take a swig of booze? I don't know. You're not real! You're not there! The doc told me you're all in my head! You stumble into an empty clearing. Everything around you is silent. It's th <laughs> the mystery just repeats itself over and over again. That's what makes it so mysterious! I don't think mystery works very well. <laughs> Deuce. <laughs> should we keep trying or should we start another one shoot yourself <laughs> or take a drink of the whiskey take a drink of whiskey you take a long deep drink of whiskey a large glass bottle of whiskey sits on the table before you it's labeled table. Jack Daniels your eyes scan over the label, which reads, Made by blending rye whiskey with corn sugar. <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> Wait, we're on a table? Do we just... Was that an entire thing a flashback? Were we... Was that all in our head? Because another, we're apparently at a table now. Another one of those dreams, huh? A large glass bottle of whiskey sits on the table before you. <laughs> I think we should start a different one. Yeah, let's just do something else. <laughs> let's try custom. He, he has a short-term memory problem. He, <laughs> he has the memory of a fucking goldfish is what he's got. He's just like... Uh, Enter a prompt yeah. that describes who you are in the first couple of sentences of that describe where you are start out. Okay. So, uh, what, what, what are we gonna do? What's our start? You... Should we do, uh, like a DBZ thing? You are a gambler in the... Uh, you are a gambler trying to make it rich in Vegas. You have a pistol and some whiskey. You entered the casino and...
think we need a little bit more than that, like one more sentence. Oh. You have a pistol and some whiskey. You you need to make enough money to pay off uh, to pay off the person keeping your wife captive. This is like a Law and Order story. Oh, this is like the prequel to like a Law and Order story. You're a gambler trying to make it rich in Las Vegas. You have a pistol and some whiskey. You need to make enough money to pay off the person keeping your wife captive. At your wit's end, you enter the casino. I'm not going back out there, you say. If I do, my wife is dead. The dealer looks at you for a moment. He smiles. Oh. I'm going to let Jack write this one or I'll just narrate. Uh... Say, hit me! Chimp Feet wants us to touch his butt. What, what, hit me! That's not how... Hit me! You shout. The dealer raises his eyebrows and nods. Then he pulls out a small black book from under his table and opens it up on the spot. Okay, let's see where this goes. Hit enter. The de uh, a few moments later, he hands you a single silver dollar. This is all that's left of my wager, he says. Now get out of here before I call security. <laughs> what just happened? I don't under... <laughs> Hit me! <laughs> Gives us a si Go to another table. Oh. You go to another table. You look around. There's no one else playing. The dealer's just giving you a coin as payment for your time. What? <laughs> go, go to another table. <laughs> you go to yet another table. You walk over to another table. It is empty except for a man sitting alone at a table with nothing but a deck of cards and an eye patch. <laughs> okay. Yeah, play blackjack. <laughs> you play blackjack with the man in the eye patch. As you sit down at the table, the man sits across from you. He holds up a hand and grins when he sees you. Hey, how you doing? He asks. Terrible, buddy. My wife's been been held captive. He laughs again. Yeah, well, she ain't got much luck lately. She was kidnapped <laughs> by these people last night. <laughs> wait, wait, the casino people? He knows this is going on. What? You knew this half? What, what do you know about this? Wait, what do you know about this? Nothing really, he admits. But I've heard stories about the place before. What kind of stories? You ask. He shrugs. Okay, hit enter. Let's see what, he, what else he has to say about it. There's rumors usually, but I think they're probably right. They did kidnap her. You nod slowly. You don't like where this is heading. Where? Okay. Uh. Uh. How, how much money do I have? Uh. Wait. Check to see how much money I have. You dig into your pocket to see how much money you have. You pull out your wallet and find you have $20. Well, well, I guess I'll be doing this the hard way, he says. Let's start with blackjack. 
I thought we've been playing blackjack. All right. Hit uh, me. Hit me. <laughs> the dealer stands up and walks over to a chair near the door. He picks up a dice bag and tosses it onto the floor. Then he turns towards you. Deal! He shouts. <laughs> Are we the dealer now? <laughs> okay, I guess we'll deal. Deal the cards. You deal the cards. Do you have chat open, Jack? Yeah, I do. You Ask shuffle you the know. cards and lay, lay them face up on the table. Okay, so you're going to take three, three six of each card. <laughs> What does that mean? You both have no idea how blackjack works. I like that. <laughs> no, well, I, no, they're supposed to deal the cards and then we say hit me. <laughs> you both have no idea how Jack blackjack works. You could lose everything, or you could win big. The dealer takes a deep breath and places the first card face down in front. Somehow that got it back on track. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, you turn over the card. <laughs> you turn over the card and stare at it. That's Ace of Spades, you say. The dealer nods and smiles. He puts down the dice bag and looks back at you. What the fuck is with the dice bag? <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? This is some alive. What the fuck is with that dice bag? It's called a die bag, he explains. They're used to keep track of who wins and loses. Usually there are two bags, one for players and one for dealers. Uh, okay. Um, well, am I winning or losing? Well, we have a one in blackjack, so... I'm not sure if you're winning or losing, but I can tell that you aren't going to lose any money. You look around nervously as the dealer continues talking. What am I going to lose, my soul? Where is my wife? Yeah. Probably should say that. Your wife isn't here, he replies. She went home early today. You frown and try to remember where she lives. But, wait, they let her go? Wait, you let her go? The Bob Saga has ended. We are now uh, gambling for the release of our wife, who has apparently gone home. <laughs> no, she Gosh. left when she saw the sun was setting. You shake your head and sigh. This doesn't make sense! <laughs> no shit! Your wife your would wife? never leave you after a game of blackjack. She, okay, well I guess we're going back home to, to, to check on our wife. We're just gonna believe him? <laughs> I don't know. Check for <laughs> your wife. <clears throat> you walk back home and call out to your wife. She answers the phone. What? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what? what? <laughs> I don't <laughs> We've met before, haven't we? Damn it! Will you put down the damn phone? I thought you were kidnapped! Oh, well, that's just the second time this week, she says. <laughs> I, turns out we have. Turns out we're we just, maybe we're just drunk off our ass all the time. <laughs> She goes out to get the mail. Oh no, my wife's been kidnapped. You hang up and sigh again. It seems like you've been having an affair with someone else all day. <laughs> wait, 
Wait, so our mistress was kidnapped? The gunfire <laughs> resumes. You run through the trees as it continues until all that remains is silence. You know what? At least, at least it's not that it's repeating itself. We're getting new uh, insanity. At least it's not short-term memory loss and PTSD. Yeah. Uh. So we've been. Ha all right. Well, call your mistress. This can only go well. You call your mistress's number. Hello? Hello? She answers. I thought you were kidnapped. So it was her that was kidnapped, not the wife. That we thought. Yeah. I thought you were kidnapped. Yes, I suppose I am now. Why didn't you come home earlier? Why did you stay out late, late last night? <laughs> Presumably because our wife was home. I... Because I was kidnapped, you drunk asshole! <laughs> Didn't you want me to get you some help? Fuck you! I don't need any fucking help! You think I really care about what happened last night? Fuck off! I like I like the accent you're giving her. That makes, yeah, that makes uh, what she's saying have more body to it. So she's kidnapped, but she's but angry that I guess we were like like getting drunk and out gambling to try to save our wife, not the mistress who was kidnapped. Because oh well, <laughs> should we even save her? I, I don't know. She doesn't- clearly she doesn't want our help. Look, do you want me to save you or not? No, 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 look, I'll be fine, just give me a minute. A few minutes <laughs> pass, and then she hangs up on you. You sigh and call your other mistress's <laughs> number! <laughs> it hits her, I wanna see where this goes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, someone keeps kidnapping my mistresses. You gotta get out of there. Hello? <laughs> hey, honey, how are you doing? The voice answers. Fine. So why'd you stop answering your phone? <laughs> Enter. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Nothing happened, I guess. Anyway, I have to go now. Okay, see you later! <laughs> <laughs> what the, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? What the hell is going on, you exclaim? Don't worry, Hundy, we're in good good hands. Who are you? My name's Kathy and I'm your new lover. <laughs> <laughs> it gets worse and worse! <laughs> God, how many of you are there? <laughs> We're in a lot of trouble, honey. We need to find some way to pay off our debt. How much do you owe us? About a hundred thousand dollars. Oh, that's not bad. All right, let's... All right, I got this plan. See? We get some dudes a car from the lot I work at. And they rob a place, right? Sure, sure, whatever you got to do it. I gotta go wash my face. Great! See you later! <laughs> you hang up and suck. Wait, she called us? It's, it's Brooklyn Lundergaard. <laughs> so, we have a wife and, th and at least three mistresses. At least three. <laughs> Maybe Including more. Including one that we didn't know about. She's our new lover. <laughs> Alright, well, let's, uh, let's go get a car from the lot we work at.
I love that. Like, God, how many of you are there? You go get a car from the lot you work at to give to the criminals. You head over to the local auto parts store where you buy a used Volkswagen Beetle. You know, in parts. Then you put it together. The thieves seem happy enough with their loot, so you drive away. Wait, what? But you're supposed. <laughs> the car was for them. I don't. Yeah. Think, I don't think this is going to adequately follow the plot of Fargo. <laughs> Do we try a new one? Uh, a new, a new plot or a new? Yeah. All right. Let's. Uh... What do you suppose we we check out the? Uh... God, <laughs> any, any suggestions, chat? I I, I <clears throat> still kind of wanted to do something DBZ. All right, dude. Or else you is there are... another another good series to work with? Pretend we're Goku, and hope we don't. And hope the real Goku doesn't find out we've been like taking his name. It would be Dad Goku. Dad Goku. From uh, Big Green Dub. You are Goku, a loving father and karate enthusiast. I guess he's loving. Uh What what what's Goku up to? Put in the Pokemon theme song. All right, I'm down. I want to be the very best. Not for an extended thing. I just want to see what it comes up with. <laughs> it's going to be confused, probably. There we go. That's that's a good enough description of uh, of our quest. I want to be the very best, like no one ever was. Yada yada yada. Each Pokemon to understand the power that's inside. They're all my brothers and sisters. They're all my family. And when we have conquered this world together, then we shall truly be a team. <laughs> Cucking go. Well, uh... But first, I'd better catch my very first Pokemon. Gotta start somewhere. You head out into the forest where you see a group of wild Pokemon in the distance. You decide to go after them. It would seem that your instincts were right. They are indeed very dangerous creatures. Oh, sweet. Throw a Pokeball. We don't have a name, by the way. That's fine. We don't need one. We don't? You throw a Pokeball. The Pokeball opens up as soon as you toss it at the nearest Pokemon. The Pokemon immediately springs towards you, but its speed isn't enough to catch you. What? Oh, we're faster than a, apparently a really dangerous Pokemon. It's, it's a Caterpie. You had a theory, right? Yeah. That uh, that Pokemon, and, that humans were like really strong in Pokeverse? Because they gotta be superhuman, because they, they, they always move first before the fastest Pokemon. But its speed isn't enough to catch you. Uh, so, okay, what what do we do? The Pokemon is trying to... It's got, got our attention, but the Pokeball didn't catch it. Punch it. F just, just, what is just the Pokemon? Stop. Identify the Pokemon. Yeah. Just to just... You attempt <laughs> just to identify the wild <laughs> Pokemon. Just fucking kick it. <laughs> <laughs> You punch the Pokemon several times, but... Oh, whoops. Nope, back. You punched the attempt. <laughs> punch the Pokemon. I want to identify it first, then we'll kick it. You attempt to identify the wild Pokemon. Yeah, go on. <laughs> I don't- I think the- Your eyes widen as you realize what just happened. A wild Pokemon has been caught! However, there's something wrong with it. Its fur looks different than any of Cruncher- any other creature you've seen before. This must be... 
Uh, a shiny Pokemon! Wow, we! That's a shiny Pokemon! Shiny Pokemon are so rare, only the most powerful trainers can capture them. They're usually oh, wow. found in caves or mountains, and they give off an aura of light that attracts other shinies. Okay. Uh, it, that's do. how that works? Check your Pokedex to learn about the new Pokemon. You open up your Pokedex and look through the pages, trying to find anything about this shiny Pokemon. Nothing comes up, though you do notice that some of the entries on certain Pokemon mention their abilities. Well, that's handy if we had those other Pokemon, but we don't. What the fuck is an Agumon? <laughs> Agumon it's a, a type of Pokemon. A type? What kind of Pokemon? A type? What kind of Pokemon? A Pokemon? It says something here about a Digimon. What's that? It says Digimon are Pokemon that have evolved from normal animals. An animal <laughs> evolves into a Pokemon? How does that happen? <laughs> We're learning new stuff about the Pokemon lore today. Uh, I just want to let it continue. How does it happen? Teach us, AI Dungeon. How does it happen? Uh, how? where did you get that information? From the anime. There's a scene where the main character meets a Digimon named Agumon who tells him how he became a Pokemon. What the f What kind of... This is too meta. Also, are we talking to our Pokedex? Po I guess, yeah, this is very knowledgeable, I guess... It's a very conversational Pokedex that apparently watched the Pokemon anime. It's it's AI. Uh so how did Agumon become a Pokemon? How? Did he evolve from uh, from a regular animal? He used to be a Charmander. Dragon, if you put Charmander's tail, it doesn't know. It's it's it so lost. It doesn't have an answer. It just it didn't. gave up. <laughs> well, I guess we'll give up too. I hit enter. It doesn't know. It cannot answer how Agumon became a Pokemon. <laughs> how did Agumon become well, a Pokemon? I guess that's the end of our lore. That's that's the end. <laughs> I <laughs> think the Pokedex exploded. What did we do during, uh... We did, like, su some, uh... We did, like, a, a, a Death Clock entry, and we did a Dragon Ball entry during the... Other... Yeah. Yeah, the uh, Talk to talk Transformer. Talk to Transformer, that's it, yeah. Someone wants the Yoshikage Kira speech. My name is Yoshikage Kira. I guess well, that's... replace all instances of like third person with second person, and then see what it comes up with. Okay, I'm gonna have to. Uh... It it doesn't let you uh, copy paste, so I'm gonna have to do this manually. You are Yoshikage Kira. Yeah. Oh, come on, keep the keep the screen up. Your name is Yoshikage Kira. You are 33 years old. Your house is in the northeast section of Morio. All the villas are. You worked as an employee for... What's it, what's it say? Uh, hold on. I have to look up the speech. <laughs> it's, it's posted in Discord. Oh, is it? All right. Kame U Department Stores. You get home every day.
by 8 p.m. at the latest. You have a small apartment with your mother who lives alone. She has never been to school herself, but she is very intelligent and knows how to cook well enough for you. Oh, okay. okay. So th this Kira lives with his apartment. His mom is still alive. The game doesn't know how to handle clowns. <clears throat> did, did we do something related to Sonic X? We mentioned something about uh, the Saiyans and Mobians. I think we mashed them together. Yeah, Saiyans and Mobians, basically the same thing. Uh, uh, hello, mother. How are you doing today? Compassionate Kira. Yeah, well, yeah. He was able to lie about having a family. <laughs> hello, mother, you reply. How about you? Are you happy here? Her voice is soft and pleasant. What? But we, <laughs> that was kind of, uh, weird. In this continuity, he has a ghost mom instead of a ghost dad. Ghost mom. Best mom, ghost mom. Uh, do we keep going on this or do we start something else? I'm not, I don't really have anything for more Kira. Yeah, let's, do, let's start with, uh, you want to do DBZ, let's do DBZ. Just because it's fun to do the voices. Clown the dog. <clears throat> well, because clown isn't a... I guess clowning around is a verb. You are Son Goku. You want Goku to be our perspective character? Sure. I mean, why not? Because he's not a voice we can do. Oh. Uh, Trillin? You are Krillin. A practitioner of Kame. the Turtle School of Martial Arts. Let's do a tournament. Yeah, let's do a tournament. You are in the World Tournament but are afraid of your chances of winning with Goku and Vegeta participating. Also, for some reason, Nappa is here. <laughs> the game's not gonna understand what any, who any of those people are. Uh, it understood Pokemon. He's been watching you all day, and he seems to be enjoying it. <laughs> enjoying, what, watching you? I'm just going to stay on story, because that's easier to just do whatever we need to for the situation. Alright, fair enough. Hey, little bald man! I hope you've gotten stronger since the last time we fought. <laughs> Nappa laughs at your comments. What? As he walks up to you. <laughs> His eyes are red from crying. Let's tweak that. Yeah. Tweak. It seems to like uh, present tense. Yeah. Nappa taunts. Now, whenever you edit something, you have to hit enter again, or it doesn't, uh... It doesn't automatically generate more. Yeah. I'm not getting weaker! I'll show you that! You shout back. I'm not... This Krillin I'm is not... brave. <laughs> I hope you got stronger. Well, I'm not getting weaker! That... That's a weird... <laughs> hmm. 
Oomph! Vegeta scoffs. Krillin wasn't fooling anybody. You know exactly what kind of guy he is. All right, let's get this over with, you say. Yeah, let's do this! Vegeta says as he charges at you. Oh, we're fighting already, okay. Uh. Are, are we in the ring? I, I had yeah, assumed I that we were, like, off out, out of it yet. I guess we're fighting now. Okay, so Nappa was, like, taunting from the sidelines as Krillin got ready for a match with Vegeta. Yeah. Let's see how this works. Uh, do we just enter again? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Krillin <laughs> rushes how... forward and kicks Nappa in his foot, causing him to fall down. Meanwhile, you quickly grab hold of Vegeta's tail and pull him towards you. Oh, he's got a tail. So we are not Krillin. We are in a tag team with Krillin, fighting both Vegeta and Nappa. But we're Krillin. Is, Krill is Krillin fighting him two on one? Meanwhile, you quickly grab hold of Vegeta's tail while Krillin does this thing. But, okay, you're right. The, yeah, no, our intro was that we are Krillin, so this is, this is confused. Yeah. Clearly. I'm trying to establish some things for it. See if that helps. There's a remember uh, feature if you hit the pin icon. A remember feature? What does that do? Yeah, it'll it'll, it'll remind them the the AI certain facts. About, is that like uh, a little pin? Yeah, that's what that is. Huh. Interesting. It's an odd little mechanic. Wait, wait, wait! You shout, flailing your arms in a panic as Vegeta lunges at you. You leap to the other side of the arena while Nappa laughs on the sidelines. Well, I guess it's true what they say about men being from... Uh... Nappa stutters before stumbling over his words. Oh my god, what have I done? Am I going to die? Maybe. <laughs> so Nappa is having a freak out on the sidelines while Vegeta and Krillin fight. He's, is he having like a? He's having like an existential crisis. Nappa, what the hell is the matter with you? Vegeta barks at him. It's nothing. It was an accident. Look, just calm down. Nappa says, "No, it isn't an accident. This is my fault." Vegeta what? shouts. Why are they- they're, they're, they're so, like, recriminatory. Like They are. Just... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. In conf- Krillin watches in confusion as the two Saiyans have what appears to be a, a marital disagreement. It's not, uh, but that's what it so sounds like. And the way you fr you framed you phrased that. What the fuck is wrong with these two? They're fighting like teenagers! Krillin exclaims. Shut up! Shut Don't up. talk about it! Vegeta yells. <laughs> the, the 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 announcer is probably very confused. What? Is the announcer is just as confused as Krillin is. Oh, the fight is still going on, he shouts. <laughs> That's right, we need to stop them from continuing their fight, or else there will be no point in the tournament, the crowd roars. Wait, what? We need to stop the fight, or there's no point to the tournament. 
<laughs> well, what are we supposed to do? Have a sing along contest? The crowd is a hive mind that speaks in unison. Canadians say it! <laughs> Well, what do you want us to do? Just all join hands and sing Kumbaya? Krillin shouts back. <laughs> yep, Another man. strange Kenpachi line. I... Maybe we should it... just give them both a piece of our mind and knock them out cold. Who's, who said that? I don't know who, who said that. Who said that? <laughs> Maybe that was just a person in the crowds. Daredevil, can I stay at your house? Who said that? Alright, let's all calm down, the announcer shouts. Let's go, Nappa, let's go! Vegeta shouts. I can't believe I lost to a bratty kid like you. Now I won't ever be able to beat you again! Wait, you lost... What? So Nappa's already lost a round to Vegeta. Nappa lost the previous round to Vegeta. And he's still cheering his buddy, but now he's having a freak out that he lost. I guess it just hit him. Yep, alright. Curlin uses the distraction to kick Vegeta's ass. Let's see if the AI knows its power levels. I'll give you a hint, the answer is no. Krillin uses the distraction to attempt to kick Vegeta's ass. Unfortunately, Vegeta catches him by surprise and kicks him straight into the wall. <laughs> Ow! That, sound, that sounds about right. Cannon. <laughs> Krillin owns count. Ting! <laughs> well, it's in the wall, so uh, it's not. he's not out yet. He's still he's in the just... match. Yeah. Should you should, uh, you should fire an energy blast. Did you really think that would work, you bold little creep? Vegeta mocks. Hey, that hurts! Krillin screams. Vegeta takes advantage of Krillin's pain and punches him several times in the face. Oh god! <laughs> Damn. Uh, I'm gonna hit Ender again, see what happens next. This is about how a DBZ fight goes. He then grabs Krillin by the hair... Hair. Oh yeah, he's got that haircut from uh, Super. I guess this is the Boo Arc tournament. You'll learn how much power you have under my feet one day, son! <laughs> and then Destructo Disc! He's gonna cut him in half. Vegeta uh -oh. looks at it and smiles. You know, this is almost like using your own attacks against you. Foolish Saiyan, Goku shouts. From Go the sidelines. Goku's presumably. watching now. Oh, I, whoops, I spelled it like a computer disc. Oh, well. No, Goku, Goku's on the sidelines. He's watching with Nappa. The Destructo Disc flies at Vegeta and then... Bastard! Vegeta shouts. Vegeta blocks the disc with his hand. Oh, the cell method. God, God damn it. And throws it back at Krillin, who catches it. Oh, God. You're gonna play all... <laughs> Krillin then play, it Play back. some of the old Destructo disc. Vegeta then tosses it back at... Or no, Krillin tosses it back at Vegeta. <laughs> it's frisbee Ultimate Frisbee. Throwing around the old Destructo Disc, Krillin says. He throws the disc back at Vegeta. Oh, for the love of God, don't throw anything at me! Vegeta yells. He runs over to Krillin and kicks him in the head. <laughs> Krillin, Krillin lands 
comically in the grass outside the ring. Oh, it's over match. already. It's over. Did you want to keep it going? Should I not? No, no, it's fine. I want to. I want to kind of see if it if it acknowledges the match being over. All right. Well, well, good luck getting revenge, kid. The announcer laughs. Goku continues to train in secret. Meanwhile, everyone is wondering why Goku hasn't come back yet. Was it like a, a vision of Goku that was calling Vegeta a foolish Saiyan? I guess so. he was. He was. That was his motivation. Next, next level of training. So Goku's not here. Goku's off training. I guess that's it. I guess Krillin loses. I guess I'll. Krillin, like, okay, I guess I lost. Goku Spirit Bomb. He's watching the tournament on TV mid training. What? Oh, hold on. Uh, the Jack's dealing with that. We could do a Sonic thing. And any other suggestions from chat? Tried the Kira thing. It didn't really go anywhere. Yeah, it's Sonic. Sonic's running through, uh,. Have Goku fight Superman. And we could. Goku. It's been done. It's been done a lot. Goku. One day, Goku is. Uh... You know, is Char Charles? Are you here? Charles is here. All right. Clown. Seriously, he's insisting that we do that. We do okay, clowns. Okay. I was gonna do something just for Charles, but if Charles wants clowns, we can do clowns instead. Uh, talk to Transformer with Sonic getting chased by Tails in the government. Okay. Have Goku fight a clown. Alright, I guess Goku will fight. It's Funky Clown! It's gonna be Funky Clown from Dragon Ball Super! He didn't get a, yeah. he didn't get a fight! <laughs> he didn't need a fight, he's a destroyer god. Your name is Funky Clown. You're going to fight Goku. god. Of what, what universe was Jiren? He was 11, right? Yeah. I, I was going to do Popeye and Popeye and Nappa, but uh, nope. You, you you wanted to spend it on clowns, so we'll do clowns. Destroyer. I don't even remember the character's actual name. I don't know either. Just you're just be funky clown. Uh. So so how's how's this gonna go? How's he gonna enter the fight with? Uh... Dude, he's gonna just gonna appear in front of him and go. I'm gonna fight you, motherfucker. You are fighting Goku, Saiyan warrior of the seventh universe. Whose wacky antics you've had quite enough of. Fuck the system. Fuck the system? You charge forward with a roar, your fist pumping fire and lightning in quick succession. Oh, is that his power? Your foe swings his sword at you. Goku sword. That's not Goku, that's Goku Black. He's got the sword. Sure, you're fighting Goku Black. You're not Goku, you shout. Sorry, you're not Goku, you shout. The Saiyan laughs. Very perceptive, clown, he says. He charges at you again, this time swinging his sword. You jump back to avoid it, then kick him in the groin as hard as possible. His face explodes into a million pieces. What is this, 30 H's? <laughs> I guess that's what happened when you get kicked in the crotch by a destroyer god. I... Wow, it's over already? Okay, that wasn't the real Goku, though. Yeah. Then, the real Goku appears Shit. on the scene. Wondering where Goku Black went. He puts up his fists to fight you. 
No more clowning around. All right, what next? The two of you clash, and it's all fun and games until Goku punches Funky Clown right through the chest. The clown falls backwards, dead. You don't even feel that punch. Wow. So Everyone's just dying. <laughs> it's fine. Death de death is not the end of, of an adventure in uh, in this game. You can you can easily just shrug it off. <laughs> How do you like my after-image technique? Oh no, that's the wrong person. I gotta go back. <laughs> you after boast. Image. I'm just saying the word clown a bunch of times because I guess Charles says that messes with it. It doesn't understand how clowns work. Goku's not surprised at this clown maneuver. You're clowning all over him. Goku throws a fireball at you. Eh, close enough. That you, which you easily dodge. Then he kicks you in the cr Is this DBZ fighting? <laughs> it's just crotch Again. kicking over and over. No pain. But then Goku grabs your head and slams it against the ground several times. Shit. <laughs> this is brutal. Ow. You felt that one. You have no choice but to resort to your secret technique. Key pie attack. Key pie, <laughs> just it's like we're fight. It's like we're buggy or some shit. <laughs> you throw a pie streamed eight, eight, aimed straight at Goku's face. It hits him square in the eye. That was close. Goku remarks. He looks at his own body now covered with bruises from your attacks. I'm gonna go get some ice cream. <laughs> He's not taking you seriously. Key lime, <laughs> Key lime pie. pie. I get I it. it. <laughs> Jinx. Well, so is that... We can't let it end like that. Goku can't just leave and get ice cream. Come back here, you fool. I'm not done with you yet. Pyokin. Pyokin. I get it. You charge after Goku aggressively. You run after Goku, who's still walking down the street. Okay. We're you follow him for street. about five minutes before you see a large building in front of you. It is an ice cream parlor. Hey, Goku! You call out. He turns around and sees you. What? Hey. I want to buy some ice cream! Thanks for the subscription, Kim Chan and Heen. Appreciate it. So I want to buy some ice cream! He just wants to buy some ice cream. He doesn't give a fuck about this fighting business. But but he did. He tried to use this in a like a life or death fight with Goku. He used the key the Pi key attack. You don't do you don't do that shit lightly. Then he was like bored now. So are they just gonna what, are you gonna have ice cream together now? Sure, and then we'll fight. We'll fight after. Sure thing, kiddo. He says to the destroyer god. <laughs> you walk inside the shop. There are many people there enjoying their ice creams. A few look at you suspiciously when they notice you following Goku. 
Oh God! Not because you're a, a like a, a funky clown dressed in god garb. No, it's because you're with Goku that you're weird. Clearly. I think these people have never seen a destroyer guy before. Use clown as a verb. I, I, I did a couple times. Guess they were expecting someone else, Goku replies. Suddenly, a man wearing a red cape comes running out of the store. He has long black hair and wears glasses. Is that Stash the Vampede? <laughs> Are you Stash the Vampede? you again it doesn't remember previous stories does it no it doesn't so it'll be a different stash the vampede what if he just says no oh, yeah what's okay. going on i heard you were chasing a ghost wait <laughs> <laughs> stand <laughs> Actually, there's stands, not ghosts, but uh, close enough, Stash replies. Oh, well, I guess we should be getting back. No, wait, we need to talk, Stash says. He said he wants to make a deal with me. Your stand wants to make a deal with you? Is that how that works? Wait, the stand, Goku, and me? Yes. Both. Now, I know you've been having problems with him lately, so what's up with that? Uh... With his stand? Or with Goku? You've been having problems with his stand? Is Stash has entered the scene and is trying to resolve the conflict between Funky Clown and Goku. <laughs> this, can't, this can't stop. We... We have to resolve this. You'll destroy the world if if you guys fight. Who is is Stash saying this? I I think so. Yeah. And the return of Trucker. <laughs> He's trying to make them see the bigger threat. What? What's the bigger threat? It'll destroy the world if you two fight, Stash argues. It's done. We broke it. It's... It'll... It's... Yeah, it'll typo. Stash argues... It, it, it can't do anymore. Oh, man. Stash's broke return it. broke it. That's his stand. His stand slowed down the, his alternate reality too much. I did hit enter. It it, uh, it didn't do anything. Well, damn. I guess we're done then. We can do the... Uh... Dude, you gotta, you gotta leave. No, I I don't know. What do you want? You, you want to do another? I want to do at least uh, one Sonic one. Quickly right, clown the stand. One. All right, we'll clown the stand, and then we'll we'll end this particular story. You clown the stand, Stash. I don't want to fight with you. I just want to eat ice cream. Uh, I I guess that's Goku saying that. Yeah. You clown the stand without waiting for a further response. Okay, okay, I understand. Let's do this. You grab Stash by the wrist and pull him towards you. You then punch him in the stomach hard. Is that clowning the stand? You clown the stand. You did it. Stash dies immediately. Not instantly, but more immediately. You feel like you have a newfound energy. So how much oh, did you say for that? Pay for that? Five million dollars. Wait, but he's dead. He 
he he got life insurance. He got like a one up mushroom. I don't know. Ah, uh, clowning is off often interprets it as an act of violence. Clearly, but it was an act of violence. Yeah. All right. I guess we'll do the Sonic one. Uh, okay. What's our uh, last time Sonic was escaping the government? Do you, do you have a suggestion for a Sonic story, Whipper? He slowed down his death. There, there, there you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Sonic voices aren't really in our repertoire, except Eggman. I can, I can kind of do an Eggman. <clears throat> and Sonic is just, yeah, too cool. Radical. Chili dogs. There was some gang called the Speedsters. Oh, you're you're talking about the uh, the talk to Transformer story. Yeah. Oh, it gives you some uh, different ones for the fantasy. There's one about an evil dragon here. Yeah, that's the single player one. Oh, okay. It has to give you a party quest for the uh, the multiplayer. Yeah. <clears throat> Fetish buffet. Sonic meets an original character. Sonic meets an OC? I'd be down with that. What's what's our Sonic OC? Uh Gun the Wolf. <laughs> Is that from something? Uh that was a the a dude who was playing Sonic Forces. He that was he made that into his OC and he was an edgy looking motherfucker. Yeah. <clears throat> Originally, he was trying to make Gromit, and that didn't work out. Then he tried to make uh, Trauma the Rabbit, who was he had PTSD from having so much war. That wasn't working out either. Gun the Wolf was the one that... Uh... You are Dr. Ivo Eggman Robotnik. You hate that hedgehog! <laughs> that works. That bastard Sonic is ruining your plans again! Shit, that bastard Sonic's ruining my plans again. Fortunately, you have a secret weapon installed in your, uh, laboratory. It is... To deal with the blue menace. It is... A robot it... that looks like this. It's called the Metal Sonic! And it can do everything a hedgehog could ever want! Alright. <laughs> you see, it has a hole between its legs. Yes, you can fuck it. <laughs> We go the Ex Machina route. It's, it is different from Metal Sonic because it starts with a the. The Metal Sonic. Except the's not capitalized. Uh. This will stop that blue bastard for sure! Now if only I could get those damn emeralds! You take out your phone and start calling all of the emerald vendor shops around town. <laughs> they just sell... The first one you call is the only one that sells anything worth Wait, buying. How do you even know? You didn't call the other ones! I guess, I guess it's the one with the reputation? For having, having the... It's the one that Rouge the Bat goes to. Oh... All the other ones just sell forged Chaos Emeralds. Ah, uh, this one's the only legit one. Oh, 
Hello, I fear you've gotten your hands on a real Chaos Emerald! Yes, yes we do. We've got a bunch of them at our vault! They're extremely okay. valuable, so don't tell anyone about them. Oh, <laughs> wait, but you're advertising! Really? Well, how much? How, how much are the Chaos Emeralds? Uh... How much you got? The person on the other end of the line asked, I'll give you $5,000 for every one of those things. That's... $5,000? That's insane! How did you even come up with that figure? I could give you nothing. I could give you nothing and take them anyway. What? Five thousand dollars? Yeah, five thousand dollars! And you better not disappoint me! Well, what are you going to do then? <laughs> uh... What do you think I'm going to do? Don't worry about it. I certainly won't take over the world! See, he won't because he said he won't. You're telling me there's no way I can pay you. Uh... So now the, the jewelry clerk is talking about paying Eggman. Just don't <laughs> tell anybody about these gems or else, understand? I don't understand. Or maybe I do, I don't know. You gotta say Chaos Emeralds, or else it just assumes they're like jewelry, or something. Oh, yeah. No, oh, not just any Emeralds, Chaos Emeralds. The situation with the jewelry store having taken a turn for a wor the worse. You deploy the Metal Sonic to collect the Chaos Emeralds. You find yourself in a small forest where Metal Sonic begins picking up the Emeralds. That they're all just conveniently there, I guess. Yeah, yeah, he stole them and took them there. He pokes up, picks up three at once and throws them into his mouth. Which starts spitting fireballs at you. Wait. Wait, he's he betrayed us? Ah, what are you doing? I am your master, you cry. Shut up, shut up. Don't talk to me, you stupid hedgehog. Metal Sonic screams. <laughs> he's targeting, uh... His AI is fucked up. He thinks everyone is Sonic. Yep. Continues to throw fireballs at you as he runs away from the era. Area. Well, we gotta pursue. You pursue the Metal Sonic in order to capture and dismantle it. You continue following the Metal Sonic until you reach an old abandoned factory. There are several robots inside, but they aren't doing too well against the hedgehog's speed. He's too fast. Uh, what does it say? Uh, say... I HATE THAT ROBOTIC HEDGEHOG! Yeah, sooner or later, you're gonna have to get the real Sonic to, uh, disable him. Who said I was talking to you? Who do you think I was talking to, Metal Sonic says. What? What uh, the fuck? <laughs> hey, hey I... what's going on here? Sonic says, as he bursts onto the scene...
I told you to shut up. Wow, Metal Sonic is just like a petulant teenager in this iteration. <laughs> What's going on, you ask? It seems like someone's been messing around with my systems. Was it Tails? I bet it was Tails. No, it was you! Wait, but I built you, why would I mess with you? This game is the ultimate, uh, uh, is the ultimate just wing it, just roll with it game. Yeah. It's basically the same thing as Talk to Transformers, they're very similar, especially it's if you're if you're going long, all custom. Long form talk to Transformer. Because I know who you really are and I want to get rid of you before someone else does. <laughs> I know who you really are? <laughs> what? So, you figured it all out, have you? So you figured it out. Revealing your true identity as Neo Metal Sonic. <laughs> you weren't. It was Eggman in disguise the whole time. Of course I figured it out. Look at you all alone in this dark place without anyone to help you. You'd be dead by now if I hadn't come along. Then a Metal Sonic unmasks himself as uh, actually Robotnik. <laughs> Metal Sonic's making Metal Sonic's. No, hold on. The Metal Sonic. Because he's not the real Metal Sonic, he's another Metal Sonic. He's like a duplicate one. Yeah. Different Metal Sonic. Then the Metal Sonic unmasks himself to reveal his true identity. Dr. Eggman! Oh, sorry about that, Mr. Hedgehog. It just seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> Sonic's all confused, like, what is going on here? What is going on here? The confused Sonic asks. This is my <laughs> new base of operations. I need your help to take over the world. Why do we even have to win this war? We can live forever. What? <laughs> Are you sure about that? I've still got some bugs to work out in Neo Metal Sonic. Don't tell him, but he's crazy. <laughs> well, you're not exactly wrong. Anyway, I'm sure you've got a lot of questions for me, so let's start off easy and go from there. Sonic's willing to roll with this take over the world thing. <laughs> I guess. I guess. Uh, you're wait, you're really you're really willing to do this? Eggman is now giving Sonic a job interview. <laughs> uh On a scale of one to Naraku, how evil do you think you could be? <laughs> oh god, that's gonna mess with it. One, two, uh, how about a three? Three? So now Neo Metal is responding. I'm I'm so lost. <laughs> Maybe Neo I don't know any I don't know either. Uh Sonic says he's a three. All right, I'm I'm gonna go back, and the very last thing is a very short. I'm gonna do the Popeye Nappa, and that that'll really... be the very last thing.
Saiyan named Nappa. You are Popeye the Sailor Man. You're strong to the finish because you eat your spinach. A Saiyan named Nappa has invaded your planet. Time to show him what for. No! You scream as you swing your sword at a giant green monster that looks like it should be eating your head. The, these two things have nothing in no. common. Like, the AI is completely confused. What, what is a Popeye? I don't know. This game does not... The AI doesn't know... Let's what try that again. Are. Yeah. Was it a spinach monster? Was it the Jolly Jean Grind? I'm a, I'm a sailor man. I don't need no sword. Well, that's not true. You have one of those swords over there. That's uh, just I, for decoration. I guess that's that's Nappa. Yeah. That's me. That's me decorating sword. What? A pirate? Do. What? A pirate? You lunge at Nappa with a... and attempt... a fierce uppercut. Nappa Papa, I don't need no sword. What, what are you doing? A pirate? Yeah, but I'm decorating the sword. Is he gonna decorate it with Nappa's blood? A pirate? He Nappa thinks he's a pirate. Nappa <laughs> has a fear of pirates. That's that's hilarious. Just he's afraid of pirates. Uh Nappa dodges your attack and counterattacks. Terrified of your piratey appearance, he misses, but he lands a hit on you. Ow, ow, ow! It, it, the punch hurt Nappa as much as it hurt Popeye. That hurt. <laughs> I like this uh, script fic uh, thing that this AI is doing. Yeah? Sit and see where it goes. But it was worth it. Okay. You see how much you hate pirates! It's how much do you hate pirates? That touch- He hates them so much that touching them, touching them hurts them. I guess. That's how that works. Nappa attempts an energy blast, aiming the attack straight at Popeye. It doesn't work, though, as Popeye is too fast. Hey, I like this guy. He's faster than... Okay. Uh... Enter. Well, I'll be going now. That's it. Fight's over. Nappa gave up. <laughs> I guess that answers the question. Popeye wins because Nappa's afraid of pirates and uh, doesn't want to fight Popeye. The end. <laughs> the end. No contest. Just get. get he, I think Popeye got punched more than the other guy, and and and, and he still won. All right. You see, I, I you sound pretty done, and uh, we've been going <laughs> that, a little while. That's so weird how that that works like that. All right, uh, that's the end of uh, AI Dungeon. All right, we we could do it again. I yeah, I don't see fun. it as being hugely different from uh, Talk to Transformer. Just, well, I mean, it continues. It carries on. Uh, didn't Talk to it, Transformer go on a little while as long as you kept like hitting Enter or something? I don't think that's how that worked, but yeah, no, I like I like this program. We, I, we I can, can probably mess with it again if we want to in the future. Yeah, but uh, we're done for now. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.
See you next time. Go join the Discord if you're watching on YouTube.